earlier today I mentioned about getting band clamps for the turbine hoses because previously I had some hose clamps on here that have the like the screw that with it's a literally a screw on like a worm drive and they weren't clamping tight enough and so I figured that this style of band clamp would probably clamp tighter and not strip out as easily which is true but I don't think they're getting quite as tight as I need them to because they are so wide that they don't exert enough force over a, a small enough area so they they're not tight enough uh, and so well this this hose is okay but this one has two leaks one on either end it's got a leak down here coming out around the the barb fitting there and then this one here has a, a similar leak so I could try tightening those more um, another thing I can maybe do is uh, heat them up with uh, like a heat gun and get them real soft and then tighten them more but uh, a problem that I had with these when I open the package is that this hardware here is not stainless this is stainless but this is not so that probably will not last very long in this pit where it's pretty much 100% humidity most of the time uh, so that's that I have wire to hook this up uh, better wire I have some 4 gauge of aluminum wire that so my plan for that is I'm going to put some MC4 connectors on that so that's 10 gauge wire so MC4 to more 10 gauge wire that will go into a box on the side and that's going to be where my connection to the 4 gauge wire is and then so that's going to come out of the wall here and then down and then underneath here and through presumably the stump roots here and then pardon all that stuff I need to clean that up next to my power meter there it will go into the house directly next to my uh, future inverter system and the inverter system that I was talking about or not necessarily talking about is a uh, split phase MPP solar cells one it's a split phase inverter so that's 240 volts AC that's 220 volt phases or lines or legs which is what we use in North America and a few other countries use it too uh, so it's an inverter that my plan is well I can go show you guys the wire at least I think I locked the garage up I don't have the keys in my pocket right now also we have a burn band so I'm just collecting cardboard <laughs> uh, this is the wire I was talking about so I got this for free somebody was throwing it out I think that'll transfer some amps just fine anyways the inverter I was talking about I want it to not feed back into my meter so the problem with feeding back into the meter is you have to have some sort of agreement with the power company to feed back to the meter I don't want to do that because there's a lot of restrictions and costs and it's not technically a UL listed system so what I want to do is take the hydropower go into the charge controller which charges a battery bank and the hybrid inverter will take any excess power from the battery bank system at 48 volts and convert it into house power but the the inverter will also take grid power and if the battery is insufficient or solar is also insufficient it will take grid power and pass it on through to the system so I think I'm gonna set that up I was having a problem trying to figure out how to do it because we have a lot of high watt appliances here because our house is entirely electric so I was gonna to try to set this up to to work uh, for a lot of the lower lower maximum watt systems like 
for example, the refrigerator, um, I have a heat pump that would probably be able to run on it. Um, AV system, lights, uh, server network stuff. So all that should be able to run on it just fine. Um, and that's my plan for it. Because this is a 200 amp service that I put in this house. Even though the house is less than 1,000 square feet, everything's electric. Plus we have a hot tub. So hot tub is 60 amps. Plus we have the water heater is 30 amps. These are 240 volt, by the way. There's a grinder pump for sewage. Uh, electric clothes dryer. And I think that's it. Oh yeah, electric baseboard heat also in parts of the house. So, so that's where we are. Um, very soon, hope to get rid of this. What is essentially extension cord that I'm running my turbine power through, and it's 100 feet long at three phase AC, um, 45, 65 volts, something like that. And so the amps aren't actually that bad at the power that I'm producing, but at the powers that I want to produce, it's a limitation. So I need to upgrade and change it. Uh, I'm not sure what to do with this system yet. What I've wanted to do for a long time, or at least since I first hooked this up, is to come straight off of there, straight off, and then from here it'd be like a, a six foot drop or more, and maybe put a water wheel there. That'd be fun. But unfortunately, there's just not a whole lot of water to run a water wheel. I mean, we can look at the water that is coming out of here, which is actually a combination of that water, which is from the same creek, just that hose there running up, and then this pipe here too, which isn't that big. I mean, it's not enough water really to even spin a, a water wheel and make much or any power at all so it's not really worthwhile to implement a water wheel from a power standpoint but maybe from a content standpoint it would make sense okay uh, that's all I got right now oh another um, observation is if there's a lot of flow then I get some some earth debris into the system and it likes to go down through this vertical leg here and collect in that and actually I think we can see it you see that dark spot right there there's some solid debris in the hose so maybe in the final system I'll have a a drop leg like that with just something to catch debris because the, the velocity in this is not very high, so all the debris is pretty much settled and running along the bottom of the penstock. Um, and then I won't have debris clogging up the nozzles, and I won't have to do a filter. Um, I get a lot of comments in previous videos like, where's the water come from? Well, at least for my system, there's a spring up there that's 750 feet away, so that's 750 feet of pipe. And it's around 275 feet above where I'm standing. So that creates the pressure and the flow is um, up to 30 gallons per minute is my design. But frequently for most of the winter, it runs comfortably around 13 to 15 gallons per minute. So we'll turn this back on and I'll see you guys later.